those of you following the, uh, the budget build know that right now we've got the X-Trail, it's got a little packing system in it, it's got a battery system in it, they can plug in a fridge, they can plug in a solar charger, they've got some upgraded tires, and now before they head off I'm going to have a lecture like a good dad would to his son-in-law and daughter, telling them all about the things that they should not forget to take when they go out into the wilderness, because if they do forget to take them and somebody needs to rescue them or they get themselves into trouble they will only have their self themselves to blame and I can wag my finger at them and say silly people you should take my advice and that is what this video is all about. I'm Andrew St. Pierre White join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe and remember to hit that notifications bell to make sure you catch our weekly videos. Right. <laughs> okay, I'm not being a meddlesome father. I'm not that kind of dad, but I want them to be safe. They're going to need to take with them some equipment to keep themselves uh, safe. And also, if they do get into a bit of difficulty, which is going to happen because it happens. There's nothing wrong with in four-wheel driving. There's nothing wrong with getting stuck. There is something wrong getting stuck on a beach with an incoming tide. Okay, because you might lose your vehicle, etc., etc. But I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going onto the internet. I'm going to pretend that you are Cameron and Kate. I'm going to give you a little lecture here. Cameron and Kate. Now you have to go shopping. So what happens if you get stuck? Well, you need to get yourselves a spade. So go to Bunnings and buy yourself a, a, a longish handle, not too big a blade shovel with a pointy end. Okay, and you're going to use that for getting yourself unstuck. And so what else are we going to need? Well, I think it's a good idea for you to take some recovery equipment. And I'm online here and I found two places that I like to visit online to find accessories that are good quality. I know that they're going to be good quality. And so that's why I'm here. And the first one is Terrain Tamer. And I'm going to go here and look after recovery accessories. So, are we going to need, a, we're definitely going to need an air compressor. And the reason why I categorize an air compressor with recovery accessories is, is that when you're driving along and the ground gets soft, you're going to have to let down your tires or you will get stuck. It's the pre, it's recovery before you get stuck, if you're not, if you know. And the trouble is with all of us, I think we also, most of us, I do, we suffer from laziness and we all think ah, that'll be fine I'll keep my tires a bit hard and we've got to get over this we've got to get the tires down to stop not only stop us getting stuck but to prevent our wheels digging holes in the environment and we want to we want to avoid that so we're gonna scroll through the page here and they've got a couple of quite nice compressors and what I do like about their website is that right at the top they have probably the most important factor of all and that is airflow, maximum airflow. But this can be misleading. So I would say to them, you need, you know, if, you, if you're going to buy a compressor and get one that'll last you, get one that when you upgrade from the X-Trail, which will be reasonably soon, if you love it, you're going to want a better, more capable vehicle. You're going to want to, why, why spend the money again on recovery equipment, on compressors? Why? So get one that'll do the job even for a larger tire. And I reckon that you're looking at a minimum flow rate of 50 liters per minute. That would be a minimum. Anything less than that and you're going to be frustrated. But if you can get above 100, great. So let's aim for above 100 and here we've got one at 75 liters per minute and here at 160 liters per minute isn't that good that sounds fantastic 160 liters but let's have a look at that is that is that really so good remember that is maximum air flow in other words zero pressure you turn on the pump and that's how much air will flow out of it as a tire inflates that flow reduces. The more powerful the pump, the, the, the less time it'll take for that flow to reduce. So you want, you, you want something with, with a high flow rate 
at 160, for example, is not a bad one right there. But let's have a look at the pump that I use. And this is one of the most expensive pumps you can buy. The ARB Twin Compressor. So if I click here onto the specifications for the Twin Compressor, I look here. This is it here. It's a double compressor. That tells me that the current draw is at 50 amps and under load. Where did you get 50 amps, guys? This is a buy and buy. I get 70 amps. On, I, mine draws 70 amps, but that's not a big deal. Okay, the airflow is 131.8 uh, liters per minute, which is actually less than that guy. Less? It's actually not less because they've given a pressure at 200 kilopascals. In other words, they've given their specifications under load, not free flowing because free flowing, it's sitting here at 174. What is really significant is the airflow under load and you can't get much better than 131 or 132 liters per minute. Very, very good. But I wouldn't suggest to them that they, I mean, at this moment, they're not going to be able to afford to buy a, um, a twi ARB twin compressor. So get yourself a trusted name. See, here's the, th here's the thing. You, it, also, if you look at the, the, the ARB thing, they talk about duty cycle, duty cycle here. And I won't go into it. In detail but what a duty cycle really is is how long can it pump for now the extra has got quite small tires so if you if you uh, you know a, a, a reasonable size pump will be able to pump all four of them no problem at all but buy an equivalent really cheap pump that might advertise a similar flow rate and its duty cycle will be a lot less and what that means is that after one or two tires it's so hot it turns itself off then the duty cycle is the thing that is so poor. So again, it's not about how much you're going to spend. It's what value you're going to get. You buy the cheapest pump available on the market today and you will buy rubbish. It's not about cost. It's about value. And the way you get value is you find people that you trust. You find brands that you trust or you speak to your mates. That's what you do. Speak to your mates and make sure your mate is more advanced in four wheel driving than you are. It's like the like the story of the, the person that took uh, finance advice, financial investment advice from a guy driving a 1997 uh, Nissan with the back door missing. OK, so let's go to recovery kits now. Again, yes, you can buy cheaper. You can spend a lot less. I like the ARB kit. It's not the cheapest in the market. It's definitely not the most expensive in the market. You want some traditional kit, then get yourself an ARB kit with a couple of shackles. So you will need two shackles at least, a pull strap for pulling, and a recovery kinetic strap. That's the stretchy one for for uh, it to enable you to get out of difficult situations where a pull strap might not need in other words that the towing or the pulling vehicle might not have enough traction to just simply pull you they might need to take a run and therefore they use the kinetic strap if you don't know what i'm talking about there are lots and lots of videos on the internet about kinetic straps and the use of kinetic straps you can go for the traditional solid heavy shackle but heavy shackles have a price to pay they're obviously very heavy and here again please don't skimp on recovery equipment when one of these things breaks it can kill people you can't skimp it's like the tires you can't buy the cheapest stuff you do at your peril so i'm saying to kate, kate and cam kate and cam actually invest here in a good piece of recovery kit and keep it for the next 20 years because you will keep it for the next 20 years if you buy good stuff. If you don't buy good stuff, you'll use it once and you'll realize this is rubbish. And so then you'll be frustrated and you would have realized you would have thrown your money away. I rather look 
uh, like the look of Max Trax. Max Trax have come up with some new um, fuse shackles. They're soft, they're called soft shackles. They are much safer and they're, they're not as heavy, but they do wear out. If you're doing a lot of recovery, then these soft shackles will be safer, but will they last as long? Probably not. But uh, the, the prices are not dissimilar. And um, again, I, I'm busy upgrading to some of these um, soft shackles because I see the advantage in them. Without doubt, one of the best recovery tools for the four-wheel driver are Max Tracks. And yes, you can buy a cheap copy. For the same reason, why would you buy a cheap copy? Here, here are the differences between cheap traction aids. Max Trax is, a, is obviously a brand name, but these things are actually, they've actually done so well in the market that people are saying, oh, that's a Max Trax, even though it's made by ARB, have their own brand, and there are lots and lots of other brands of... And why do I think Max getting the original is a good idea? Well, these last longer than the cheaper ones because the cheaper ones will decay the plastic itself, the actual plastic decays in the sun and you've got them on your roof rack or you've got them somewhere you know they're going to be exposed and the sun actually degrades the plastic not the case with the max tracks uh, certainly i've never seen a, a set of genuine max tracks affected by sunlight um, the design of the edge here is brilliant they've got the teeth right on the edge they did that for a reason you know these things are cleverly designed and, and developed over time and they're not just copies and a lot of cheap Chinese that they just copy it they have no idea and neither do they care what they're copying they just do something that looks the same and sell it make it from the cheapest plastic they possibly can and they sell it and why not be why why not support local industry okay spend a little bit of extra money and not a lot extra but these aren't necessarily more expensive than their competitors and they're very good I vouch for them and I use them. So, uh, Kate and Cam, find some money, get yourself a set of Max Tracks. You won't regret it and you'll keep them for 20 years. Okay, recovery, that's your choice, but don't skimp. And when you go and buy yourself a compressor, look for the airflow, try and get something absolute minimum 50. Uh, try and go around 100. If you can go above 100, then that's fantastic. And again, these compressors, you can get ones with fantastic specifications on eBay and they're rubbish. They're just rubbish. And they have, a, I really wouldn't do it. So if I were you, in my position, I'd go to Train Tamer, because you know you'll get good quality, or ARB, you know you get good, 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 good quality, and Max Tracks, you'd know you'll get good quality and the difference is here you're going to keep it for 20 years instead of just two or three. That's a start. What more do they need to do? Well I would suggest that they put on some a light bar or um, some lighting in the front for those unavoidable times that they have to drive at night. Let's, let's have some good illumination. Uh, maybe a roof rack because if they're doing a really long overland trip they're going to maybe want to carry I don't know more tents more chairs and stuff like that it's very easy to add a roof rack to this vehicle and what else is there if you think about it if you dumb it down to the absolute essentials okay you've got you've got food storage you've got a fridge you've got a way of charging your battery your, 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 your computer batteries and camera batteries um, you've got well what else is there all you need there is space for some extra fuel to get the extra range, which they've got, which must be tied down. And what else do you need? Really? Nothing. There's nothing else that they must have. It's a basic backpacker's overlander. There it is. So we have to come across. Takes yeah. six meters. Just like that. Yeah. This 
very rudimentary, but <laughs> it's cheap. Okay, to wrap up, guys, I've got a few gifts for you. My favorite part. Your favorite part, <laughs> yes. All right, open that. Can you? <laughs> oh, that's nice. Oh, he knows how regularly I get injured. <laughs> good one. Thank okay, you. and I have to say now that I'm lucky enough to be given stuff to review, and sometimes they give me more than one item, and, uh, and I thought, you know, it's the kind of thing that you'd be too lazy not <laughs> to not yeah. take a good first aid kit. There it is. Thank okay. you. Okay, right, so now I've also got, um, it's a little shovel spade thing that I probably won't use. Okay, and this, can you look at that? Tools. <laughs> oh, I need one of these. Cool. Yeah, that is cool. I can actually fix things. <laughs> <laughs> this is a wrench, right? Okay, just, Kate, just shut up. Um, you will embarrass, you're going to embarrass me. All right. <laughs> So that tool kit is, a, is cheap and cheerful. I bought it for the Range Rover trip. I needed some to, to, you know, I needed to have tools in case of a breakdown, and I probably won't need them, but it's, it's a perfectly good basic tool kit, light, in a bag, great, f you know, and Everything leave it in your vehicle. So, yeah. so it's, all, it's all new, and I'm sure you'll get more use out of it than just me having it sitting here in a cupboard somewhere. Okay, so. Um, Persian rug. I don't have the Peruvian rug, Peruvian. but instead I got a rear wheel harness for a Max Track. So I know you don't have, but yep. this is no, but this is not your final four wheel drive. No. Okay, so when you eventually have a four wheel drive with a wheel at the back and you want to carry some Max Tracks, there are some harnesses. Okay, waterproof bag, and in case you find yourself in a situation where you need to get drinking water out of a suspect water source, little emergency thing, weighs nothing, put it in the car. Okay. That's brilliant. Uh, lastly, I've got a, I've got a battery charger. I was given two of them. So when you, before you go on a trip, you've got an AGM, mm -hmm. keep it charged on AC. And if you do that, your battery will just last longer. Because remember, your system will never ever give it a 100% no. charge, okay? And so if you do occasionally give it a 100% charge, it'll last longer. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna give you is this here. Set of Max Tracks. That's Your, brilliant, thank you. There you go. We learned our lesson last time. Okay, because <laughs> uh, I know you guys. Now these are the extremes, you don't really need the extremes, these are pretty heavy duty units. I drive, units. we will. <laughs> but they really, really work well, so. That is my gift to you. So, uh, thank you very Thanks, much. that's and brilliant. I, is there anything else that we have forgotten in this whole thing? Aside from the Persian rug, Peruvian. I think that we've done very well. <laughs> okay, so now I should say now, at the end of this, we've built a very basic overlander. And I'm very grateful for all the comments on YouTube, and they've been a lot, and most have been really good. But some of them have been worded like, why don't you just da 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 da? What does just mean? Just means spend more money and. That's what just means. Few comments have come through and said, okay, you can do that by better by spending a similar amount of money. Very few comments. What we've tried to do is make, uh, is turn an ordinary vehicle into an overland traveler that is safe and practical for the minimum cost, plus a fridge. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah I think we've done that. Basic, exactly. plus a fridge. Yeah. That's the little bit of comfort that we've added in here. Yeah. We haven't put a rooftop tent on, we haven't done a whole lot of, you know, practical, yeah. safe, with a fridge. You can do everything that you want to go and do with this. Yes. With that added luxury of the fridge. Just yes. meaning you can go on longer trips without having to, you know, go get it, ice. Yeah, and go get ice stuff, and yeah. having that available to you. Mm. You can just be a bit more remote. But 
I think it's brilliant. I and it's just to me, it's the starter package yeah. for the least possible money. And we all hope you've enjoyed the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> Okay. Thanks for the Okay. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and click the notifications bell so you don't miss our weekly videos.